From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, production The Killers, director Robert Siadmak, stars Burt Lancaster, Shelley Winters... Hollywood Screen Directors present A Postscript to Murder, The Killers, starring Burt Lancaster and Shelley Winters, and introducing the director of the film, Robert Siodmak. It's not always necessary to have lived a fabulous life in order to create fabulous motion pictures. But in the case of our guest screen director tonight, it most certainly has helped. At 19, he was a seasoned Shakespearean actor. At 20, director of the Dresden Germany Stock Exchange. At 21, rich. At 23, broke again. At 24, he launched the brilliant motion picture career that was to bring him to Hollywood. The director of such thrilling films as Dark Mirror... Spiral Staircase, and tonight's story, The Killers. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Siodmak. Thank you. Thank you. Hollywood has given the world two kinds of motion pictures which are typically American. They are the Western and the gangster films, such as The Killers. This is not to say that America is a country of gangsters any more than a country of cowboys. It means only that America has created a new and fascinating kind of entertainment, such as our story. That instant is drama. Now here is The Killers, starring Burt Lancaster in his original role of Sweet and Shelley Winter as Kitty. Sweet! Hey, Sweet! Sweet is me, Nick. It's Nick. What are you doing laying down, Sweet? You sick? No. Listen, sweet. I was down in George's diner when two hard guys came in looking for you. They, they said they were looking for you to kill you. I know. Then what are you laying here for? There's nothing I can do. Well, don't you want me to go and see the police? That wouldn't do any good. Couldn't you get out of town? I'm through with running away. But why? Why do they want to kill you? I did something wrong once. Thanks for coming. I just thought, well, okay. But they're coming looking for you, Swede. They're coming looking for you. did something wrong once. What? A gas station attendant murdered in an out-of-the-way town called Brentwood, allowing himself to be murdered, helplessly and without complaint, submitting to extermination. Why? Why does a man come to such an abject end? Headquarters put me on the case because I had some college criminology and because I'd known Swede, the victim, back in the old days. This isn't the story of how we got Swede's killers. That's routine police work, and you've heard that story a thousand times. What brings a man to such an end as Swede's? That's the important personal story, and this is it. One by one, we rounded up people who'd known the Swede, some of them on the level. One who wasn't on the level was a gunsel named Blinky Franklin, who knew the Swede when. Give, Blinky. Well, let me see, ten years ago. Swede had just knocked Soldier Burns for ghouls, eh? That put Swede right up there as a contender for the light heavyweight championship. Well, after the fight, I took Swede over to Jim Colfax's apartment where a big party was going on. Kitty Collins, Jim's girl, was singing over the piano. 
Right away, I see that the Swede's interested. So I waited for Kitty to finish his song, and then I brought the Swede over to meet her. I loved him so, but there I go. Tonight, tonight I must forget No more memories Swing out, tonight I must forget Music, maestro, please Hey, Kitty, Kitty Oh, hello, Blinky. I don't see you beating your palms. Now, look, look, Kitty, I want you to meet Sweet Anderson. Sweet's a coming light heavy champ. Oh, how do you do? Hello, Kitty. Uh, you two make yourself acquainted. I want to talk to some of the boys. I'll see. So you're the next champion, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> do you like the fights? <laughs> I'm afraid I never saw one. No kidding. I can't bear brutality. The idea of two men beating each other to a pulp. Makes me ill. <laughs> well, I don't get hurt. You're unusual, then. Uh, I'll, I'll go into some other racket before I let them knock me punchy. Really? It's uh, too bad Jim is out of town. He'd like to speak to you. Who's Jim? Jim Colfax. Um, he owns this apartment. Oh. Well, uh, why would he want to see me? Oh, he has lots of irons in the fire. I'll arrange it for you. Well, thanks. Th th that's swell, Miss... Uh, Miss... Kitty. Remember? I remember. Well, don't forget. I'll see you at the fights sometime. Two, three, four, five. Sweet, get up! Three, get off that canvas for the fight! The Swede was finished. He'd broken his hand badly in that fight. He'd never fight again. For a while, I didn't see the Swede. Then one night, I was in Lou Tingle's Arena Cafe. I'd been given a tip on some hot jewelry, and sure enough, there was some of it walking in on Kitty Collins' dress. Swede was with her, looking very prosperous indeed. I let him sit down, then I walked over, trying to make it look like a social visit, for a while anyway. Sam! Sam Redden! How are you, boy? Hello, sweet. Kitty, you know Sam Redden. Yeah, I know Sam. You're looking pretty sharp, sweet. That numbers racket really pays off. <laughs> boy, you know everything. <laughs> Say, that broken hand was the best thing ever happened to me. Well, how are you, anyway? What's on your mind, Sam? That diamond brooch Kitty's wearing. What are you talking about? Grand larceny and hot jewelry. Do you mean to tell me that brooch was... was stolen? Let's take a ride downtown, Kitty. Now, wait a minute, Sam. Sweet. Is this a pinch? Don't let them take me. You can't do this, Sam. You're not going to stop me, are you, Swede? Look, let you and me go someplace and talk, huh? Look, Swede, if your girl happens to be a shoplifter, I'm sorry about it, It's but... not true, Swede. I didn't take it. I had no idea it was stolen. Make them listen, Swede. I'll give it back. I'll leave town. But don't let them take me, Swede, please. They'll throw the book at me. Look, Sam, you don't want Kitty. I swipe that stuff. I'm the one you're after. Get me? Okay. I get you. If that's the way you want it? Yes, Sam. That's the way I want it. I pleaded with him to tell the truth, but he stuck to his story and it got him three years. When he got out, Blinky Franklin met him and took him up to a room in a midtown hotel where Big Jim Colfax and some of the boys were working on the biggest payroll job of Jim's career. Kitty Collins, the girl for whom Sweet had served three years, sat on a trunk, knitting. I, uh, I guess you know everybody here, don't you, Sweet? Welcome back, Sweet. Hello, Jim. There's Dum Dum over there grousing around. Ah, yeah. Of course you know, uh, Kitty. Hello, Sweet. Didn't hear from you much in prison, Kitty. I'm not much for writing. You know that. I know it now. Uh, let's get started, huh, boss? What's a new pitch? Pull up a chair, sweet. Now, this is big. It's the Prentice Hat Factory payroll over in Hackensack. We walk in as workers tomorrow morning and lift the roll. I'll give you the details in a minute. After the stick-up, we split up and meet again on the halfway house tomorrow night on Route 1. Halfway house, Route 1. Uh, how much is in it for us? Yeah, it ought to be good for $250,000. Ah, not bad. Split how? 
Well, I'll take the first hundred grand. You can divide the rest three ways. Who declared you in for the big slice? I declared myself. What about Kitty? Kitty's with me. What do you mean, Kitty's with you? Don't start anything now, Swede. What do you mean, she's with you? I spent three years in stir for a robbery she done. What are you trying to give me? She's with you. You want a blueprint, Swede? All right, I'll give you a blueprint. Shut up, Jim. You keep your mouth shut if you don't want it slap shut. You put a hand on Kitty, Jim. You just try it. Oh, keep out of it, Swede. Kitty's Jim's girl now. Get out of my way, Blinky. Swede, mind your own business. This is my business. (coughs) You crazy, Swede. What did you hit him for? I'll kill you for that, Swede. Reach for your gun and I'll kick your brains out. Cut it out, both of you. Cut it out. Why, you dumb palooka. Give me a hand, Blinky. Yeah, yeah. I ought to give you the works, Swede. Anytime you say, Colfax. I got a job to do tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 8. Here's the full pitch now. Cars, all cars watch roads leading from Prentice Hat Factory in Hackensack. Armed holdup by at least three men leaving holdup scene in three separate cars. All cars proceed to Prentice Hat Factory at once. All cars calling all cars, calling all cars. are listening to the Hollywood Screen Director's presentation of The Killer, starring Burt Lancaster and Shelley Winters, and introducing the director of the film, Robert Siodmak. This is the concluding program in the present series. Beginning July 1st, The Screen Director's Playhouse will be heard on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time under the sponsorship of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. The opening program in the new series will star Cary Grant in Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. Remember the time, July 1st, and each Friday thereafter at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. We invite you to be with us then. And now, back to the second act of tonight's production of The Killers. Who is it? Kitty, quick. Let me in, sweet. What's the matter? Close the door. Sweet, I'm gambling my life coming to you like this. What's the matter? What's wrong? Colfax is going to double-cross you. Going to double-cross me? They aren't going to halfway house after the robbery. You'll go there, but they'll be someplace else. And so will the money. Why are you telling me this? You're Jim's girl. Sweet, I can't let them double-cross you after you took that three-year rap for me. Is that the truth? So help me, sweet. It's the truth. They're going to meet at that old farmhouse on the North Turnpike. They are, huh? They are. Thanks for putting me wise, Kitty. What are you going to do? I'm going to do them like they mean to do me. Don't give me away, darling. Don't you worry, baby. You know why Jim hates you like he does? Because of me, sweet. He he knows how it really is between you and me. Oh, Kitty. Kitty, why did you ever go back to him? I don't know. Maybe because I hate him. I'm poison, sweet. Poison anyone I really love. I don't care if I hurt Colfax. Kitty. Kitty, you're not going back to him again. You're leaving with me tonight, after I handle Colfax at the farmhouse. I love you, sweet. Hold me. I'll come back tonight. We'll go to Atlantic City. Hold me, darling. Just the two of us. You and me. Yes, darling, yes. Hold me tight. Tighter, darling. Tighter. Boys, I'm tired of waiting for Swede to show up. I'll just take my money now. Shove me the suitcase, dum-dum. Let's start counting. Okay by me, boss. Uh, Start counting, Jim, so I can start counting. Okay, boys, hold it. Uh, Swede, what's the idea? Get your hands up. All three of you. You're reaching for trouble, Swede. Well, idea you guys had, huh? 
leaving me to cool my heels at the halfway house while you split the dough here. You were told of the change, that's why you're here. Shut up. I'll take that suitcase. Thanks, boys. Don't move. Next time, play it straight. Come on, Ashburn. All right, stop it. You'll mow you down as soon as you come out of the door. Dirty double-crossing rat. You'll get paid off, dum-dum. But good. Sweden, Kitty escaped to Atlantic City with the $250,000. They stayed there for several days. Then, well, a woman named Queenie, a chambermaid at the hotel where they stayed, supplied us with the rest of that episode. Queenie? I, I was on night duty, turning down the beds. When I got to his room at 12.12, I heard something smash inside. I went in, and that poor young man was a sight to behold. I'll never forget it. There he stood, a wild look in his eyes, half crazy, holding a splinter chair in his hand. Just as I came in, he threw it at the dresser mirror. Then he just stood there, like a big hurt kid. It was awful. She's gone. Oh, sir, you mustn't carry on like that, sir. She's gone. Where did she go? You mean the lady came here with you? She's gone. She went out this morning with a suitcase. A suitcase? The laundry, she said. She's gone. I'm going to. I'm going to. Oh, please, sir. Oh, not the window. Not the window, please. Take your hands off. No, please, 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 please don't. Let go. Please don't jump. Let go of me. Let me go. Please don't do it, mister. If you do that, you'll never see the face of God. I want to die. You'll burn in hell till the end of time. I want to die. Wiley's room right away, please. Swede never saw Kitty again. For six years, Swede Anderson dropped out of sight. Then one day, a heavy, sleek convertible rolled up on the gravel of a gasoline station in Brentwood, New Jersey. Good evening, sir. Fill her up. Yeah, I guess so, bud. Uh, do you usually take Ethel? Ethel? Yeah. Yeah, Swede. Ethel. Uh, I must look Swedish. Everyone calls me Swede. This town got a name? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is it? Brentwood. Brentwood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brantwood, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Sweet. The next night, the killers came to Brantwood, and Swede lay on his bed, numbly awaiting his fate. I did something wrong once. In someone's opinion, a blast of gunfire corrected that wrong. Swede had double-crossed Colfax, taken a quarter of a million dollars from him. And then Kitty had taken it from Swede. It took some doing for us to get the details, but we got them. But not the final details. We needed Kitty for that. We got Kitty. I found her singing in a plushy nightclub, and I made a date to meet her there after the last floor show. At a corner table, I told Kitty some of what we already knew about Swede and the Prentice hat hold up. Then I popped the $250,000 question. What makes you think I've got that money, Sam? We got Blinky Franklin. Blinky talked. There's a chambermaid in Atlantic City who remembers your face from pictures we showed her. And I've just had a talk with Jim Colfax. You've seen Jim? He's mighty provoked about your skipping out with all that money. You told him I took it? He's mighty provoked. 
Look, Sam. Suppose, suppose I raise seventy thousand of the missing money. Uh-uh. Huh? Sam, I've turned over a new leaf. I've got a home now and a husband. I'm leading a life that that's worth fighting for. Sam, what can I do to save something out of that life? Tell me. Turn state's evidence. What do you want to know? Who planned the robbery? Jim Colfax. Say that in court? Yes. After you took the money and left Swede flat in Atlantic City, how did you get rid of Jim Colfax? I, I staged a fight with him two days later and walked out on him, too. And you were in the clear because nobody knew you'd been with the Swede and taken his money away from him. Lovely girl. Sam, can't we go somewhere else and finish this talk? Where? Well, how about your apartment? Sold. I'll go powder my nose and get out of this costume. Don't go away, will you? I glanced over toward the entrance, and there they were. Death and his twin brother, and they were coming my way. I'd never seen them before, but I knew who they were. The killers. Their faces were empty of everything except that blank cruelty of the professional murderer. When I saw the long, vicious revolvers come up at me out of their coats, I didn't hesitate. I slid under the table fast and started shooting. (laughs) Death and his twin brother were down, and I jumped up and made a beeline for Kitty's dressing room. It was empty. The door to the outside alley was open, and Kitty, of course, was gone. But I bet I knew where. The house was an elaborate one on the edge of town. The front door pushed open easily. Someone had gone in too fast and left it unlatched. I went in and closed the door. Whoever had come in had also alerted him. Jim Colfax was waiting for me at the top of the stairs. Britton? Present. And my boys didn't get you. On the contrary, Jim. Well, allow me. Colfax? I better... Get me a doctor, Sam. Jim, what is it? Oh, Jim. Better still, a a priest. Oh, Jim. Jim, darling, I'm sorry. I love you, Jim. I, I know, Kitty. It wasn't your fault. Sam? Yeah, Jim. Tell me, uh, how'd you figure it? Look, anyone can go to the Hall of Records and find out you and Kitty were married. You knew I was lying when I said I'd thrown Jim over. We know a lot of things, Kitty. I don't know why Jim sent those killers to blast the Swede. I... I had to. Swede was the only... the only one who knew that Kitty had ever had the money. Poor Swede. He never knew that Kitty brought the money straight back to you. You two framed the whole thing so you wouldn't have to split the take with anyone. You just used the Swede to pull your chestnuts out of the fire. But I didn't have anything to do with Swede's killing. No? Jim, tell him. Tell him I didn't know about those gunmen. Jim, you're dying, so why not say it? Say Kitty is innocent. It's no use, Kitty. Say it. Say it, Jim. Say Kitty is innocent. Say it. It's no use, Kitty. Say it! Say it! Say it! He's dead. That's it. I didn't tell you a detective story full of clues and pursuit. I wanted to tell you a Swede story. There are a lot of people in the world like Swede, more sinned against perhaps than sinning. Sure, Swede was to blame for a lot of things. But who is to blame for Swede? He's gone now, despair dying on his lips. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm through with running away. I did something wrong once. Thanks for coming. What about, Swede? I read something the other day, I can't forget it. It went, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore, send not to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. I did something wrong once. What loosed the killers on Swede? 
Something he did or something we didn't do, all of us. I did something wrong once. I wonder. What did we do wrong? Our stars will return in just a moment. But first, a message of interest to all our listeners. This is the concluding program in our present series. Beginning July 1st, the Screen Director's Playhouse will be presented for your enjoyment on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time under the sponsorship of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. The first production will star Cary Grant in Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. So for great motion picture entertainment brought to the microphone, remember the date, July 1st. Remember the day, Friday. Remember the time, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Now, here again are our stars, Burt Lancaster and Shelley Winters, and screen director Robert Siaki. Uh, uh, Robert, 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 at the beginning of the program, you said that The Killers is a typical American film. Oh, yes, it is. Then tell me something. Uh, why, uh, why were you, with your European background, chosen to direct the picture? Well, it's very simple, because I hadn't spent my life in America. Everything was new to me. I saw things that you don't see. Well, like what? Well, let me give you an example. When I first traveled across the United States, I came to a small town with a big sign. The sign said Coca-Cola. So I said to myself, "Uh uh-huh, I'm now in Coca-Cola, New Mexico. (laughs) (laughs) Then I came through Burma Shave, Arizona. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? (laughs) And uh, that's the way you became a director? Uh, Certainly, my dear Shelley. It's merely a matter of applied ignorance. (laughs) <laughs> oh, no, it isn't, Robert It's a matter of talent and skill and cultural experience And I guess being born in Europe is kind of an asset Oh, please, I wasn't born in Europe My first years I spent in the United States No kidding <laughs> Well, what's your hometown? Why, can't you tell by my accent? Well <laughs> Robert, forgive me, but no Somehow I just can't place it <laughs> Well, I tell you Memphis, Tennessee <laughs> Born in Memphis? Well, certainly. Listen, I'll prove it to you. Good night, you all. <laughs> good night, Colonel. Good night. And good night to you, Bert Lancaster, Shelley Winters, and Robert C. Ottman. Mark Hellinger's The Killers was presented to the courtesy of Universal International Studios, who will soon release Calamity Jane and Sam Bass, a Technicolor production starring Yvonne DiCarlo and Howard Duff. Bert Lancaster will soon be seen starring in his own Norma production of The Hawk and the Arrow, soon to be released by Warner Brothers. Robert C. Odmack's forthcoming release is the Hal Wallace production for Paramount, Thelma Jordan. Shelley Winters will soon be seen in Take One, False Step, a Universal International picture co-starring William Powell. Robert C. Odmack appeared to the courtesy of Universal International Studios, who will soon world premiere the picture Illegal Entry, starring Howard Duff, Martha Torrin, and George Brent. Included in tonight's cast were Sam Edwards, Tony Barrett, Frank Gerstle, Bill Conrad, Gwen Delano, Clark Gordon, and Dan Riss. The Killers was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Bill Karn. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Listen again when Screen Director's Playhouse returns to the air on Friday, July 1st at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Remember... Screen Director's Playhouse, production, Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House, director, H.C. Potter, star, Cary Grant, date, Friday, July 1st. The NBC Theater came to you from Hollywood. 30 Minutes of Melodies follow now on American Album of Familiar Music. Then listen for Take It or Leave It with Gary Moore and Horace Heights Original Youth Opportunity Program. All three follow immediately on most of these NBC stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.